The second type of data is metric data. It's divided into two types, continuous metric data and discrete metric data. Let's first talk about discrete metric data. Consider the data in this figure. This shows the parity of mothers of babies whose birth weights are shown in the second one. Parity, by the way, is the number of pregnancies. Discrete metric data, such as that shown in the first figure, comes from counting. Counting is um, a form of measurement, hence the name metric. The data is discrete because the values are in discrete steps, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Parity data comes from counting. We count the number of pregnancies properly by asking the mother or by looking at records. Other example of discrete metric would include number of deaths, number of pressure sores, number of angina attacks, number of walking steps, number of physical therapy sessions, and so on. The data produced are real numbers, and in contrast to ordinal data, this means that the difference between parities of 1 and 2 is exactly the same as difference between parities of 2 and 3. And parity of 4 is exactly twice the parity of 2. In short, metric discrete variables can be counted and can have units of measurements, number of things. They produce data which are real numbers and are invariably integers. Let's talk about second type of metric data which is continuous metric data. Birth weight is a metric continuous variables because it can be measured. For example, if we want to know someone's weight, we can use a weighting machine. Um, we don't have to look at the individual and make a guess which would be a, a, approximate or ask them how heavy they are. Very unreliable. Similarly, we want to know their temperature, we can use thermometer. Guessing or asking is not necessary. But what do we mean by continuous? Compare a digital clock with a more old-fashioned analog clock. With digital clock, the seconds are indicated in discrete steps. One, two, three, and so on. With an analog clock, the hand sweeps around the dial with a smooth, continuous movement. In the same way, weight is a continuous variable because the values from a, a continuum, weight doesn't increase in steps of, um, uh, of one gram. Because they can be properly measured, the data are real numbers. In contrast to ordinal values, the difference between any pair of adjacent values, say uh, 4,000 grams and 4,001 grams, is exactly the same as difference between 4,001 gram and 4,002 grams. And the baby who weights uh, 4,000 grams exactly twice as heavy as the baby of 2,000 grams. Um, some other examples of metric continuous data include blood pressure, blood cholesterol, waiting times in minutes, body mass index kilogram per meter square, peak expiry flow one liter per minute, uh, and so on. Note that all of these variables have units of measurements attached to them. This is a characteristic of all metric continuous data. Because metric data values are real numbers, you can apply all the usual mathematical operations to them. This opens up a much wider range of analytic possibilities than is possible with either nominal or ordinal data, as you will see later. To sum up, metric continuous data results from measurements and they have units of measurements. The data are real numbers. These properties of both types of metric are markedly different from the characteristics of nominal and ordinal data.